And hello and welcome. Q Sports International and Predator present the Apex Wisconsin Open, the second stop of the Predator Pro Billiard Series. This is the fourth and final day in Baraboo, Wisconsin. Game is 10 ball for $75,000 prize fund. 64 players started here on Wednesday. We're down to the two finalists. The winner gets 22,500. The runner up gets 13,125. In stage two, it is two or three sets to four. If tied at three games, in the deciding set, it goes to a shootout. In this final match, we have Tyler Steyer, USA, versus the killer, Joshua Filler from Germany. Off to break and winning the lag is, who is the, who's, who's? This is George Teich and Tim DeRoyter, and he's gonna introduce the gentleman that's about to break the balls. <laughs> yeah, of course, he's a former World Nine Ball champion. U.S. Open champion, Moscone Cup champion. I mean, I can go on for a while, but in the other corner, we have a former Kremlin Cup champion and also a Moscone Cup champion. So I expect this match to be very nice. Tyler has been moving the balls pretty good. He's been out moving most of his opponents during the week. So let's see if he can do it with Joshua Filler. Not only out moving, out playing most of his opponents all week. And uh, thus he's in the finals versus Joshua Filler, who Tim chickened out, and he was going to introduce him as the killer. <laughs> yeah, well. Filler. I got a little shy. <laughs> yes, he did, folks. <laughs> we were going to have some fun with you out there, but uh, instead, uh, you got our normal selves. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And the killer with a miss, a very, very rare miss. Yeah, played an awesome bank shot on the one. Just this one was a little, little yeah, got a little short on the two. And I am not exactly sure why. His body language didn't look good there. Oh, it's, I have not seen that from him on that miss. Well, it's also, it wasn't the toughest of shots. So for him, I can understand it was quite disappointing to then miss this. So. Well, this is a big opening and an early opening for, for Tyler. Joshua has been opening most of his matches with a break and run. Instead, Tyler comes up and uh, looking to steal the first game. The young man from Oshkosh. I have a very nice little tool, folks, uh, provided by Fargo. It gives me their last meetings and how they came out, and also how they match up against common opponents. And I'll give you some numbers and see what you make of them. In common opponents, Tyler is a 46.6% favorite to win. In those same common opponents that they've played, Joshua is a 58.7%. Tyler has been down in that percentage against Federgorst, against his last semifinalist, Gerson Martinez, and succeeded and brought home, uh, moved on in the tournament where they, they failed. So he's been the underdog in both matches and came out on top. Can you do it again against Killer Filler? Let's find out. They met twice in 19, in 2022, 19. Oh 19, my Lord, whoa. I'm showing my age. Uh, <laughs> They're about 20 years old. <laughs> in 2022, uh, July 13th at the, at the World Games in Birmingham, uh, Joshua defeated Tyler 11 games to 10. And then in October of last year, at the US Open nine ball, Tyler defeated Joshua Filler nine games to six playing nine ball. So there's a little history for you. And we'll see how it turns out. But this very first game looks to go to Mr. Steyer. He has two balls to pocket. Uh, this one will be pocketed. Position on this 10 ball is very key. Yeah, 
clinical run out so far. He's been having the cue ball on the string. A little and longer tempo. And you said that well, you said clinical. Actually, Tyler, with open racks like he just had there, has been very clinical and very successful with these runouts. This is probably one of the hardest 10 balls he's faced. Oh, that's a big miss. That Ouch. can tell that can tell a lots of things there. missed it by quite a bit and how did he leave this stem ball did he leave a cut yeah, this well. is a tough shot this is another little tester the pocket will be bigger though if he yes. plays his pocket speed oh that did sound a little high pitch like it was strange sound but it goes in and high pitch but it went dead center yeah yeah big big Miss by Mr. Steyer. That ball could not be hit any better. Yeah, some early nerves in the arena. Has been beating a lot of good players this week, but yeah, we all know that Joshua Filler is the favorite in this match. And he, for a lot of people, he was the favorite to win this tournament this week. Yes. So going into a match you also know this now did Steyer think by himself like okay well I still have opportunities I can do this or did he already get nervous from the beginning that's what I wonder well I'm sure he was just as nervous when he uh, defeated Feder Gorst right on the same table true and then this match here I mean if he can take this down think of the confidence boost that this young man will have It'll be it'll be huge. Great but break But by the here. same token, he's got his hands full with this man right here. Yeah. This yeah. Man. I mean, we, we just know that he's on a different level, and that's when you it's, it's tough exactly. to play him knowing that he is so different than all the other players. But then on the other side, Federer is like that as well. So. Now Tyler gets to come back to the table with what? A kick on the one ball? Yeah, or is yeah, he, I mean, he's going to play defense. Kicking with right spin, maybe, then you hit the long rail, and because of the right spin, you will come back behind the 10 and the congestion down table, and you can send the one ball back up table. I don't think he has pushed to jump the one, or at least I don't think Filler did this because the jump, the five is kind of far. So not much room to land the cue ball with. And not too much control to get on the four, so. He'll probably try to just miss this and kick the one ball to the middle of the table, middle of the rail, and the cue ball. Oh, he's want going all the way up. Yeah, so he's played it, it very nice with that right spin on there. Yeah, this, this jump cue's big, though, if he even needs it. From that at camera angle, it looks like he doesn't need the jump cue. I think he does, but it will not be jumping by much. Real first. No. There. Oh, it was open. Yeah, no, yeah. it was open. Oh. But look at this. Well, if Tyler can play safe, Joshua can. Oh, he did. He did go real first, but then still he was able to see quite a bit from the one. Kicking one reel. Well, and the open opportunity. Big opportunity number two for Tyler. Yeah, and like Lost. we well, like we discussed before, if Tyler can get that one game on the board. I think that's going to make a huge change in how he's feeling in the arena. Get the monkey off the back. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you hit that one good. He's been coming with those shots all week. Uh, that um, that ten ball missed surprised me, but you know, in Tyler's defense. I've seen Alex Pagalion miss a similar shot. I saw Shane Van Boney miss the exact same shot in Las Vegas from the opposite side. The exact same shot oh, on the 10. I mean, it just does happen. It does it happen. It is not yeah. a shot you will make 100 out of 100 times. It's just the fact. It's just a little off angle, and you're a little disappointed because you missed perfect position. I mean, there, there can always be many, many things. Maybe he took his eye off the shot a little bit, or maybe it was a little quick. Maybe the shot clock threw him off. You know, there, there's many things. And something as simple as maybe the nerves got him. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, the main thing for him is to forget the first opportunity, level the score, play yourself into the match. Now see right here, he's gonna have a nice line going two rails for this eight, directly for the corner pocket for a nice little follow shot for the nine and then the 10. The whole thing is to keep this cue ball in line for the eight ball coming off the second rail. He's gonna go for the side pocket instead. More room, more margin for error. Yeah, I think better to control the speed like that. So little draw, little smaller angle on the nine. We'll play two rails, I think. Yeah, but I like less angle than that for this yeah, shot. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I, I, w I wouldn't mind coming back another, just about a foot between the side pocket and the ball now. Tyler doesn't care, and he's good with it because he just executed it perfectly. And now this 10 ball, straight in. Ball and in it goes. <laughs> Dice is four, but could have been 2-0. There's now one each. Yeah, a little careless on that one ball. From filler to go rail first and, and end up put behind himself her. behind yeah. the nine. That I I agree with the rail first. I didn't agree with the speed because he'd have to come off that rail, the second rail. Yeah, I, yeah. It was just maybe he did it so the pocket would be more accepting. But if he could see that much of it, well, you know, there's nothing to say that he's not nervous too. Yeah, might be a little nerves. I'm sure they are starting to go away now, though, because usually they start in the beginning, the first 10 minutes, you know, you're a little shaky, and then at some point everybody gets used to the conditions and to the arena, to the fans. I guess that's all part of it. Usually it takes a little time. It's usually the first track or the first two or three turns at the table. Yeah. And then as soon as you're able to let your, your, your stroke out on a shot or two, hello, I feel good, Daddy. Oh. Oh, I think that one ball is on. Not straight. But she, he might be able to shoot the one over the eight in the corner. Opens up the four as well. Safety behind the four, or does he go for the bank? I think safety behind the four. There's not really a reason to go for the bank with how the three ball is tied up. Yeah, and Tyler. He's in jail here. <laughs> and no chance of parole on this shot. Throw away the key and all that. I mean, yeah. uh, let's see what he does have. Can he jump it off the second rail? 
I was thinking, can he bend around the four still? Or can he use the short rail, ah. go in between eight, four, and use the other short rail to hit the, tw the two? Two ah. rails. That looks like it's there. Going off the head rail to the ins inside the first diamond off the bottom rail uh, to hit the four, two rails. Short, short, four. That sounds like a dance. He's going to hit it straight on. What a good shot. Does he get rewarded here? He yes. might. Yeah. And he is rewarded. Yeah, great hit there. Yeah, they deserve a little little jelly roll there. That yeah. was that was a really tough, that tough was kick shot. That was jelly on toast. That was a good shot. And usually the shots where you're kicking away from the ball, so you, you're having a blind ball, basically. That those are the ones that are super difficult to to hit. Well, this is this is some shot too. Buckle up, folks. We're in for a really good match. doesn't catch the well it was no matter where he was it was going to be pretty much sold out left is sort of straight but this young man right here can move the cue ball any way he pleases and he got down there for a shot on the side pocket if he so chooses and yeah, now is he gonna run into the rail and bump the five ball out a little bit might be a good idea because the five does not go in the corner nope he's going to take it right where it's at so that must mean he's going to cheat the pocket a little bit behind the yeah. six he's going to slide it no. down the rail or maybe it, it goes just enough but he's got a big pocket if he can get straight on the five well and then yeah probably shoot the seven in the top left corner because that seven still needs some work Filler does look a little jumpy though. Like just now I felt that he was a little quick jumping up and already running. Like I feel he's not as calm as he was earlier today. Well, his results don't show at this rack. It showed at the very opening shot though when he missed that one ball. Can he ha can he handle this in the side? It oh, looks like it, it looks really tight. John better be eyeing this one. Oh yeah, nice and clean. Yeah, straight. Plenty of room. Room. Yeah, straight. Wow. All the way down, or does he just come to the middle of the table and yeah, take the cut on the nine? Yeah, I think two rails forward, center of the table. He's lined up nice for this. He come all the way down to the side pocket and get close. Yeah, nice out here. Was not easy at all. Very nice out. Two to one to score. Filler to break. What a match we've had. Filler defeated Donald Adams, LJ Bryseth.
K. Wu, Tyrell Blowers, Alex Kazakis, and then defeated Vitali Patsuda in the semifinal and now meets Tyler Steyer in the final. Tyler, on the other hand, started out defeating Mason Koch. He lost to Tyrell Blowers in a shootout. He beat Dave Kaspriski, Jared Demalia, Kang Lee in a shootout, Feder Gorst, Pedro Alawaldi, and then we saw him defeat Gerson Martinez Poza right here on this table in the semifinal. And here they are matched up against each other. Both players are sponsored by Predator. Playing with Predator equipment. Oh, makes two balls, makes a one ball on the side. Nice on the two. But that three ball is not in an easy position. And then that nine ball also. And how, how great would it be for Tyler to beat one of the world's greatest players in his own state? This it crowd be will be unglued. I mean, They'll I come undone. I think it will get really crazy. Well, and, we and we all know he can. Like it's it's not like he has no shot at all. Like well, it's, it's definitely possible today. We heard the cheers when he defeated Feder Gorst. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the crowd is slowly becoming bigger and bigger because they all now oh. they, they all feel like it might be this day. You know. Well, folks, the crowd here consist of people watching the pros for the Pro Billiard Series. It also consists of a lot of people here for the Wisconsin State Championships in the CSI, BCA, PL, and the USA PL State Championships. So, built-in crowd, built-in fans, and what a match we have. Got some work to do on this nine ball. Will he attempt something here on the nine? No, he's too straight. Well, he just made sure he had the A angle to work with. Straight would have been disastrous. He's got A angle to work with. Now, let's see how he works it. I think it's gonna be three rails. Oh, it just, oh he, he took a bank. No, he took a bank. No, he miscued. That is not something you get to see very often. I'm giving it, well, I'm gonna make sure it doesn't go before I give it back. <laughs> I thought he might be playing that three rails around off the, off the eight, cutting the eight over and coming around. And wow, what a shot. That threw me completely. Of course, that's not hard to do, folks, if you know me. Yeah, the only, only. Gave it back. Shot, I could see if he can see enough of that nine is overcut the nine and get the cube all the way back up table. If it's not there, then he might be in some trouble. Um, I like I like going two rails, hit the outside, and then the nine ball will go off the ten towards the corner, and if you don't make, it comes back to the short rail. Cue ball back up table. No, this shot. I mean, I'm surprised Tyler gave it back if he had this shot. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but that was a beautiful crown, predator crown cue that he, they showed off right now. Joshua plays with the 12-4 Revo, and Mr. Steyer plays with the 12-9 Revo. Extension, extension, oh, he's got 40 seconds now to make up his mind. Is he gonna play the bank? Well, what else would you play? Side yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bank it right to where his hand is right now. I was gonna go the other corner. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll shoot the, this corner all day long. I like the shot so much better. Oh, he did hit that really soft. He's left the nine on. He was trying to get behind the 10. Yeah, 
is guaranteed to be on the 10 ball here. He's going three rails around. For a three to one lead, this 10 ball. That's why I said I'm surprised that Steyer gave it back. If he had to only overcut the nine and it would have been safe. So Joshua Filler on the hill, 3-1. Upcoming events that we have. Since this is the second stop, we still have Michigan, Michigan Open to go with the state championships in Battle Creek, Michigan, September 19th to the 24th, Ohio in Wilmington, October 11th through the 15th. Again, the state championships in conjunction with the Pro Billiard Series Tour. And then Medalla Light Puerto Rico with the CSI League's Caribbean Championships in San Juan, Puerto Rico. What a venue we had last year, and what a venue we'll have again this year. It was one of the best events of the year. Oh, the four ball. Four ball's gone. And, no and the shot two ball, the two ball going to stop it? I was going to say that one ball is already an extremely tough shot, and then the two <laughs> ball makes it even worse. The last rolling ball always gets you, Tim. Don't you know that by now? Watch this. This is the last rolling ball that's going to get him. Oh. <laughs> well, they cut us off. Two shot ball. And it got him dead square center. Keep in mind, folks, this, this is the race. It's two out of three sets. If they're tied after a set apiece, it's not like the first part or stage one. Stage two, if you're tied after two sets, you go to a third and deciding set. But if you're tied at three games in that set, it then goes to a shootout. But if you win four to one, four to two, or even, well, not 43, because at four to three, you're going to a shootout at three to three. So probably banking the one up to the five. Getting the cue ball back down table behind the nine. Use the five to stop the one. No, he just. Yeah, he didn't even play to hit the five. Does he kick it or does he mass say it? I like kicking at this. Two rails. But he's going the Massé real first. Yeah, it's Which also, if you don't make the one, then you don't sell out. Just wondering how how elevated is he going to be with that nine? Because it could be... Oh, no, he's, he's kicking, kicking off the other it. side. Oh. Well, this set ain't, ain't over yet. No, it's not. And with Tyler's big break, he's known for his break. It's all open for Tyler. Nice position for the two, the two to the threes there. The five ball he has to play good shape on. Uh, it's only open on one side. I think it doesn't go by the six. So you want to have the cue ball in that area. Short side, in other words. 
probably stop it here and come back for that short side position. Oh, he's going to draw it back to the short side position. Yeah, go straight there. Yeah. I like it, though. Oh, either way, that see, he likes he likes to draw his ball. Well, this way you don't risk to get behind the seven or even get the six ball into play. This way, the only thing you gotta do is make sure you make the shot and have a smooth soak. Totally agree, but keep in mind, a lot of times I call shots that I would play because I don't draw my ball like he does. <laughs> I mean, it was not extremely easy because he had to hit it well, but he didn't really hit it great. So, and he has left a shot on the three as well. If Filler can get on the five, this set is over. Yeah, 50 yard line on the cut, just enough. Well, this almost, this almost seals his fate for the first set. Now it's a matter of getting it done by filler. You know, Tim, since I've been here, that drive to the airport was so pretty. I just love Wisconsin. I think I might become a cheesehead now. <laughs> yeah, it, it has been great here, hasn't it? It has. So who's buying the drinks? <laughs> well, not me. Hopefully I can get some practice in tonight. There you go. That was the reason for that comment, folks. Someone uh, texted Tim and said, if you say what I just said, I'll buy the drinks. Well, we all know how desperate George wanted these drinks. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, we can't for a while because we have another match after this one. Yeah, we after this match, we Meanwhile, do have a women's last eight match. So... Yeah. Yeah, but in the meantime, the killer takes set number one, four to one. We'll go for a short little break. We'll be right back. back and we may have some highlights from that first set nice bank shot by Josh to the side pocket hey you made that great bank to get to the two ball and then you missed that two ball don't tell him that that was a highlight oh <laughs> nice 10 ball well I mean <laughs> It was so unexpected. Yeah. Well, hopefully our viewers saw it he, anyway. He hit that four ball great. That was a great shot. That was especially after you know what happened. Look at this. Look at this shot. Even though it uh, it, it gets safe. Nice Again. opening shot there. And this is. Well, that was to have a little fun at the end of that set. We have a couple of cheesehead comments, so. Ready for the second set. Let's see if there was the trophy for this event. 
Let's see if Tyler has it in him too. Let's see that big break, Tyler. He just asked John if there was a light or something to turn off. I don't know, some, someone had probably some flashlight on, or I don't know. Rule number one, don't take pictures with flashlight in a pool room. Or, at, or at the tournament. I love this. Your, oh. fr your friend texted about Cheesehead, and I just had a friend just text me, please do not become a Cheesehead. <laughs> <laughs> well, nice to stir some things up. Thanks for the... Uh, now we know who's listening. It's great to have you here. So making two balls on the break and might go for the bank here. Yeah, he's called the bank. He's going to play it two way as if he doesn't make it, one ball is going to travel to the center of the table and most likely have the eight and the 10 in between. It's gone in. Yeah, great shot. Pocket. I like the way how he. Great two-way shot. Yeah. Fantastic two-way shot. Look at the speed on this. If it hangs, it's, he's got to go to the jump cue. And if it doesn't, he's straight in on the two. Shots like that will find yourself back in stroke in no time, and you'll feel real good about it. around the seven no decided to take a longer six ball doesn't have to go all the way if he gets to the center of the table that's okay yeah nice shot Guaranteed to have some nice angle on the seven to do the same thing. Probably going two rails towards his next shot. Nicer speed control to do it that way. You know, if someone says that age is no requirement in this game, you have a 28-year-old Tyler Steyer versus a 25-year-old Joshua Filler in this Wisconsin Open in Baraboo, Wisconsin. We've had some beautiful weather outside. He's got a little steep cut here on this eight ball. Yeah. Came up short and now to hold a cue ball is scary so I expect him to go right back where he is now just to make sure he can cue the ball a little nicer. Great shot by Tyler. Yeah, good recovery. Especially as he had missed a tempo like that before. No, it was could get in your head saying, oh well, those shots uh, don't like it that much. This is close to the ten ball that he missed before. The cue ball was up where his hand is. Yeah, but now it will go in. Tyler Steyer takes the first lead. And that applause is cheering him on, reminding him that you might have missed the first one, but you got the second. I mean, what, what more would you want to see if you're, you're a local player, you have such a great player in your own state, Tyler Steyer, and now he's facing, according to Fargo, top three in the world. Yeah and might be just 15 minutes from your house. Yeah, there's Margaret, Tyler's wife. Margaret Fefalova Steyer, Steyer. She's doing well. In fact, we're gonna have her on the camera right after this match, uh, playing 
I forgot who they told me she was playing. Kelly Fisher? Kelly Fisher. Uh, Allison Fisher. Oh, Allison Fisher. Allison Fisher. Yes, yeah, she, she's in the next match on yeah. the TV table yes. here. Quite a final match. The Duchess of Doom and, and Margaret Steyer. Big break, and he's known for his big breaks. One ball to the side, denied. Nine ball in the corner, denied. One-eight combo is coming up. Yeah, and I think if you can get on that two ball, if you can get nice on the two ball from there, the run out is quite doable. Maybe some, maybe controlling the one ball on this shot could be dangerous. If you cut the eight a little bit too much, that one ball might move Over behind. The right. the, oh, yeah. oh, yeah, behind the seven ball there. A little more angle than he'd like to have on this two, on this one, to go to the two. Probably going for the bank here. Yep. And, and the nice ten ball, yeah. is it gonna get him? No, I don't think so. And even if he, if he can't hold the cue ball, to where he can have position between the 10 and the 6. He can go for a line between the 9 and the 6 ball. He ended up perfect on this too. Yeah, guaranteeing an angle to automatically get to the 4 ball. Drop it in, maybe a hair of right spin. For the 4 ball in the same pocket as the 3. Probably just gonna stop the cue ball, bounce it off the rail real soft. Take the two the cut on the six and go two rails towards the seven. A little bit of low right and uh, wrap out of the corner. Just as it seemed to where Tyler stepped his game up a little bit, Josh says, well, let me just make sure I stay with you on the score line. Josh doesn't worry too much about the score line. He knows that if he successfully pockets every ball he has available to him, the score line will come to him. Score one each. A little bit of carbonated water, it looks like, which is a good idea. Yeah, also for him, that finish line is going to get closer. Usually handles the pressure pretty well, Joshua Filler. But every day is a different day. You know, sometimes every match is a different match. You step into the arena one time and you feel full of confidence, and then the next time you step into it, you might be shaking like a leaf. Two 
ball got kissed in and nice position on the one. Three next to it, four next to it. Is this one of these two minute times? Well, I don't think so because getting on that five ball is a little bit tricky. So I expect him to take a little bit more time to make sure he gets there. I'd rather get the job done and, and run this out in right. four minutes than trying to be fast and don't run out in two minutes. If you were with us uh, in prior matches, we uh, kind of teased each other and Josh, I guess, to a little certain extent. He ran out one rack in two minutes and 10 seconds and the next rack under two minutes. And we called it before he started out. <laughs> and that's why I said, is that one of these two minute moments? Well, and he wasn't even running. Yeah, <laughs> like he, he just walked he was around. Just comfortable playing. Okay, so is he gonna follow? I think he's just okay to go in between the eight and the nine. straight on the five or does he have just enough to oh no he can cheat the bucket yeah what much more can we say sometimes cue ball on the string watch and learn watch the patterns he plays watch his cue ball movement watch the simplicity of what he does. Well, he did get a little bit in between here. Expect him to shoot it to the corner and draw the cue ball in between the eight and the nine for the eight in the side pocket or the bottom left corner, the top left corner in this view. Yeah, good recovery shot. Again, not ideal. But now he's going to cut it in the side and go two rails. If he hits the second or third diamond on the top long rail in this field, he's guaranteed to be on the nine. He's always going to run towards the nine ball. Not really much risk in playing it that way. It took a little bit more time to make sure he gets there, but he gets, he does. So it's the main thing. Two to one. Appreciative crowd. It's funny when Tyler wins wins a game, they're a little louder. Yeah, but that's that's obvious. You know? Yes. And, yes. And I mean that's that's also a thing if like for Filler to, to deal with. Those are thoughts that should not get into Filler's mind. He doesn't hear him. The moment this man is even walking into the arena to practice before the match, he has his headphones in, he doesn't look up at anyone, does not make eye contact with anyone, walks up and pretty much looks at you and says, get out of my way, walks into the arena completely focused. I saw him walking in the arena three times so far this week, and that's how he's walked in every time. Well, the thing is, you gotta stay in the moment. You gotta make sure you're only thinking about what is about to happen, what you are about to do, and not about what everybody else around you is doing. Right. Which is very tough sometimes. But yeah, and then also people will say, you might look a little bit arrogant, or you're ignoring people and stuff, but I think it's just you're managing yourself to put the best performance you can do. Exactly. I mean, how many times have you been walking into a match or some? I was going to say jackass, will say something stupid and it plays on your mind for the next 20 minutes. You know, and he makes, he avoids that completely. Well, he does need a big shot here on the two. This is not a gimme. Is he going to draw to the long rail and then in between the six, nine, or is he just going to go past the side?
Yeah, great shot on the two ball. Uh, thank you, New Cloth. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I think it's safe to say that yes. the cloth saved him. Well, it's not ideal again. Having a small angle towards the side pocket and tough to get off the rail. You know what's funny, Tim, is I was having a discussion with a couple of the pro players and top pros, and they want tighter, tighter pockets to make this a better game. But when they miss something like that, guess what? They ain't so happy anymore. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's also funny. They want tighter pockets and everything, but then in a match when your opponent, like, the the, top, the pockets are tight and it wobbles and it still drops, they're just as disappointed as when the pockets are five inch big. That's like right. It, That's right. It's never gonna change how you feel in the chair. That's just the nature of the game. Perfect. Yeah. So to get on the hill again, and wow. there's not really much more Steyer can do in this match. No, he's doing what he can. He was up 1-0, and Keller has been breaking, clearing, breaking, clearing, two in a row now. You know, uh, I keep watching these these both these guys play with a beautiful Predator, but Predator equipment. I asked Josh what his what his was, and he told me he plays with the 12 4 Revo, of course. But he doesn't remember. There's Pia watching her husband uh, try to take Mr. Steyer apart. But anyway, he p told me he just it's just a Predator Crown. It's one of the old series Crown cues. And there's the Gold Rush break cue, and I didn't get the name of the one uh, Tyler plays with. He was going between two cues for a little bit and he chose this one instead. Is this not the road line? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's just a beautiful cue. Both both guys are playing with beautiful cues. They're both using the Revo shaft. One's a 12-4, one's a 12-9. Limited yeah. True splice. I think oh, that's the that one. I think that's with? the one he's playing with. Yeah, it's a limited edition. Well, just keep in mind, guys, when you want to find stuff like that, take a good look at it because you'll remember it the best. And um, go to PredatorQs.com. Go through their equipment. They've got quite a lineup of stuff. Also very informative is to go through their uh, pro team line and see which pros are playing with Predator equipment and what they use. Um, also, you can get some information on some of your favorite pros if they're in that... Uh, on the protein. And is jump cue coming out or is he going to push out? More than likely the push. Yeah, I think the push <laughs> as well. <laughs> I will say that uh, I think it was two years ago they had a real nice rapless uh, on the, in the crown line at the Predator booth. And I kept uh, teasing with one of the reps there about taking it home and buying it from her. But uh, that line had been discontinued, and it was the crown line. They had it as a demo. So pushing to the top rail. Good speed, pretty close to the top rail, and I expect Filler to play this himself. A couple balls in the bottom right corner that could give him some good protection on the one. Or on the cue ball, depends. Or, yeah, he could also overcut the one in between the two and the three and back down to the short rail. Bring the cue ball three rails to the top right corner. Create long distance and hopefully get some cover. 
He's got to win this set. He's got to turn this around. If he leaves a, an easy shot here, and he has not. Oh, he's hit it well. Just, oh, he's, just a little too far. He's going to be up against that three ball. If he can roll this with some accuracy, he'll go two rails and try to get on the three. Well, he could play that. Could also play the other way around, the opposite sides, or bring the cue ball all the way back up behind the seven. Oh, well. Not quite. There's that chance for you. There it is. Well, I don't know if he can make it. I think he can. Okay. But then what do you do with the two ball? That's the biggest question for me. That's, that's second part of the shot. Taking his extension on this 30 second shot clock. He can make it. But what do you do with it? Does the two ball go down the rail? No, it doesn't. The nine and the seven are in the way. Well, I'm going to get back behind the three off the two ball if I make this one ball and leave it there, leave the cue ball. I'm going to just draw this, uh, fire this two ball into the nine and put the cue ball behind the three again, if possible. Or. Oh, uh, does that bank cross, Tim? Look at it. It's, 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 it could be on a kiss. Take a good look. It's tough. It's I tough, huh? On the new cloth, I yeah. don't think so. That's, it, I think it it's be super on a close. Yeah. Could, uh, just a hair of, like, but yeah, if you kiss it just a hair, it's too much. Oh. Yeah. No, no, no. This, from this uh, view, no. no. It, it does go. He can draw out of it. As I look at this now, he, he can, but I'm not sure he's playing it. Well, that could be it. Well. An open table for Joshua Filler. I don't see any obstacles. I don't see anything out of line. I think uh, maybe my first idea was a one that I would have gone with, and that was the safety behind the three. Just a little draw shot. But that that that. Bank did look tempting. Two rails down for the six. Yes, now top spin. I think with a little left spin, going to the center of the table. Staying away at least from the two balls in the bottom left corner. Just <laughs> yeah, he can. He could wrap around them, but I don't think he will. He'll go with the inside English and go up towards the seven. Yeah, you don't have to play much. It's no. maybe one tip. And That's it's enough. It. That's all he used. Now here's where the choice is. He can get the cue ball back to where it's at rather easily. And that's probably what he's going to do is try to come on that line. Enough angle to be able to slide over for the nine and come up by the side pocket with the cue ball. I'd like a little more angle than this. No, I think it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, but I, Just a little far. I'd but like, <laughs> that's right. That's what I'm saying. Especially at this stage, I, I you know, I <laughs> yeah, and just these two balls to capture his first Pro Billiard Series title, add another title to his resume. Well, Tyler didn't do too much wrong in this tournament. No, and especially. Even in they this match. They went one each, and from there, Killer broke yeah. two, in a, two in a row. And then it's so tough for Tyler to get back in it again. I, yeah. yeah. 
I mean, well deserved. He's played a great tournament, Joshua, and uh, yeah, I don't really expect him to miss How this. How much you can say? But there's some pressure. You never know. But he's been showing us some amazing stuff this week, so. Yeah, half the highlight shots are his. <laughs> well, <laughs> the other half were Tyler's. There it is, folks, the Wisconsin Open champion, Joshua Filler. Runner-up, Mr. Tyler Steyer. This has been George Teachea and Tim DeRoyer bringing you the live action. I hope you enjoyed it. I know we enjoyed you guys. Thanks for some of the comments in the chat. Have a great day. You might want to stay for the, might stay and do the, the closing ceremonies here. Yeah, and don't forget, we do have the women's quarterfinal at 8 p.m. So make sure you tune in. A lot more great stuff to come. So be there. Plus tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2023 Apex Wisconsin Open Award Ceremony. We are hosted at the CSI League's Wisconsin State Championship in the Ho-Chunk Casino, Baraboo, Wisconsin. Our founding partners are the Prepper Group, Q Sports International. Our title sponsor for this event is Predator Apex Tables. Our official partners are Kamui Brand, Medallia Light, and Rums of Puerto Rico. Our event is played on the best equipment in the world. Predator Apex Pro Pool Tables, covered in Predator Arcadia Performance Cloth with Predator Arcos 2 balls and under the Predator Arena Billiard Lights. For right now, I'd like to introduce our dignitaries for the awards presentation. Representing the Predator Group, 
Mr. Cyril Fournier. And representing Q Sports International, Ms. Amy Kane. Ms. Kane, would you do the honors, please, of presenting our trophy to our 2023 Apex Wisconsin Open champion, Mr. Joshua Filler.